Let's do this. Hello. Hello. Uh, where am I looking? Right there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, uh, welcome back to me. I'm so happy to be home. You have no <laughs> fucking clue. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was amazing. Trips were good, but now I need to be here for a little bit. Uh, so welcome to this 79th weekly stream. That's a lot of weeks. That's 79 of them. Uh, and uh, we still ha have a title incoming any minute now. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Bjorn, for joining us and helping us make this uh, magical journey as usual. Yes. Uh, thank you uh, to the mods, Bucket, Clyde, well, Clyde's CM, uh, Sassy, uh, Steve, Suggestive and Faded. Thank you for thank being you here Thank you for joining today. us. Uh, I'm also going to jump back into our very pleasant little uh, discord uh, for the uh, the mods to tell me the good news thank you very much okay let's do this uh, <laughs> news and announcements oh thank you that's much nicer yes um, news and announcement you can go ahead it doesn't and show that i'm there. green from lack of sleep uh so first of all g star uh i was lucky enough last week to be in korea for uh, G-Star in Busan, Korea, an amazing place full of future. Uh, seriously, that is like stepping into a sci-fi movie. It was great. Uh, there was a lot of really fun people. I have a few pictures that I want to show that I took. So we were embedded in the Twitch boot there. It was uh, thank you very much to our friends at Twitch that helped make this good. Uh, there were some good people. Susie, thank you for taking us out on a delightful dinner with the little uh, Octopus tentacles oh, you, squirreling you, you in you our plates. I did uh, not, oh, but I poked did. them. Oh, you poked them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so this was the boot. So this is an interesting little story. Right next to the boot, there was oh. this. And I passed by and I go, these are really cool sculptures. Hey, wait a minute. I know this. And the next one. Uh, and I, I asked the guy and the guy answered in Korean. Obviously, we can't talk. So it, as soon as I found someone who could translate, I went back. And this was a teacher from a school over there. And those are student projects. Really? He was just those showing really, up really a good. student projects. So they're really, really cool. And I told him that uh, we would love to have those made into actual statues that, and things. Is that clay? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. I imagine. It's oh, clay that's a lot like. of work. Yeah, but he was saying that a lot of students enjoy making uh, Dead by Daylight stuff, so that was really cool. This was uh, the one cosplayer we saw, a really interesting take on Lori. I was very happy. As you can see, that's my happy <laughs> face. Uh, th there's, there was very little cosplay uh, at G-Star, which was surprising to me. So the boot we had was 10 different stations with really, really fancy computers and a little glass case at the bottom. And then people would just come by and play Dead by Daylight. It was really nice. Uh, there's a lot of people at G-Star. There's wow. a lot of people. Uh, wow. It, nice and that's a picture of Alex taking a picture of the crowd. <laughs> uh, and that's me and Alex streaming. So we surprised a few people. Uh, by streaming in the middle of the night for most of our usual watchers. Uh, but uh, it was really cool. We just sat there. There was a few stations. Obviously, it's a Twitch boot. So we just uh, streamed the game, and we had a good time. And some people were passing by. It's funny. The whole Twitch boot was built like a zoo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I've so, seen them yeah. a lot around and streamed from them. <laughs> and people are just like, hi. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so that was a great time. Thank you very much for everybody who helped make this happen and for uh, everybody who came to, to say hi. It was, just, it was just, uh, really cool. The next one, uh, that's for you. Uh, yeah, I actually want to uh, shout out this uh, weekend. There's going to be a big tournament. Uh, it's a duo tournament organized by ADV4U. And uh, it is mainly a Germany-issued okay. uh, tournament. And we will announce more detail on Twitter, of course. And so uh, hosting, we're going to host the tournament on our Dead by Daylight channel. There's we, a lot of people participating there in this is, one, right? It, it is one of our biggest ones, yes. Excellent. Up to date. So um, you guys go check that out. I will. Yes. Uh, next, we have the PlayStation Experience. So that's the next place where we will be. Uh, we'll both be there, actually. Yes. Uh, that's on the weekend of December 9th or 10th. 
something like that. I think we have also a programmer that's going to join us. Yes, and, uh, uh, Ben uh, Lalonde is going to come with us there. So the, it's the 9th and 10th. Yes. There you go. Uh, yeah, there's going to be a few of us. Katie's going to be there. Olivier's going to be there. So if you are in the uh, neighborhood of Anaheim, come see us. Come uh, shake and our hands. I Give think us a it's, hug. it's nice to note that it's our first console yep. uh, event, too. So. Yeah. yeah. It's a fully PlayStation thing. So, yeah. Uh, next, we have the blood web changes. Yes. What did we want to say specifically about that? Well, you we put that on the, the list. W we did, yes. Yeah. You did. Okay. And you were like, well, basically yeah. uh, talking about the patch a little bit and ha the feedback we had. Yeah, yeah, it's true. The blood web changes, uh, and and it's mostly how much more pleasant I think it is to you. Oh, is there someone trying to open the door? No, I think okay. it's just wind. So uh, we we had a patch come in a little while ago, but the the blood web changes sort of went under the radar. But I think they are actually uh, they make everything much smoother, uh, and it's a lot nicer faster. to faster for sure. But also just the fact that you're not paying eight thousand for uh, you know a yeah, common so for thing a that's on the outer offering ring. Offering eight thousand was so there's a lot sad. of stuff that that got a little uh, that got a lot better. Smoother, yes, with a D, please. Smoother. Uh, yeah. Oh, I want to talk about the hotfix patches uh, that came in. The, just the last one. Obviously, we had a few yesterday. things to. Uh, uh, yeah, that was yesterday. I have you, not slept you, enough. Okay, you can go to my Steam post and just scroll down. Is that? Oh, or this one. Perfect. So uh, the bloodlust display was incorrect. Yeah, that's fixed. But blood dust was working though. Yeah, it never stopped working. It was purely a, a UI notification that was wrong. Uh, the blinding effect, uh, the flashlight, it was impossible to avoid the flashlight for about 48 hours in the game, which was painful. It was a nightmare. Yeah, well, actually, the, 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 the killers were getting flashlight evasion, but were still getting well, the, that's the actual blind, so the, they couldn't see. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So the, the scoring mechanic in the back was still correct. Yes. But the, the visual uh, didn't work, so we fixed that. Uh, the half-second freeze after hooking a survivor, that. that's a weird one. We tried something. This was not a bug per se. It's really, we needed a way to stop the killer from entering the survivor in the hook yep. uh, because that caused issues where you could just stay in the survivor and it created some weird stuff. So we put a little uh, moment there. Well, but uh, the, the experience was really not fun, so we, we, we yeah, changed it, it into it a bit of a It felt like, like, uh, like, like you, like you yeah. were lagging or you something. You never want to lose control, yeah. so uh, we changed that. Uh, the one perk appearing in the blood web, uh, that's fixed also. Uh, Kindred not appearing in the HUD, another uh, issue that was fixed. And the placeholder text for some of the nightmare add-ons, that's also been fixed. So yes. that was the latest uh, patch. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to go through it. Uh, this one is yours. Yeah, I just want to quickly say Steam Awards are back on. Uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of really uh, funny and f funnier posts about that on Reddit. So please uh, keep <laughs> enjoying uh, the moment. And tell your friends that don't play Dead by Daylight, the like two of them, uh, to go get it because it's uh, really crazy cheap right now. On sale, it is on sale. Uh, yeah, player, player reports, reports to, to the mods. So, basically, uh, if you wanted to report a specific incident with proof, uh, our system was to add a mod on Steam and then one on one mm. talking to the mod, sending the proof and everything. Now, uh, we are yeah. introducing a better system. So uh, there's going to be a form, like a web form that you fill in. You put all the information in there. You don't have to contact one mod specifically, I will change the official forum post for it to uh, give you guys the, the uh, link, link to the to the forum. And every mod on their profile are going to have the link also. But, but is you that, won't is that have, on now? Uh, it's going to be on after the... Uh, I, I'm waiting for Sujan's... Uh, so today-ish? Yes, today-ish. Okay, -ish. perfect. Absolutely. So it's going to be way easier for mods and for yeah. players to uh, to do so. Wonderful. Uh, wonderful. Okay, so quickly, let's go to... Uh, th that was it for the news, really, and announcements. Uh, yeah, 
There's no big news uh, today. Oh. No, no, the, none of the big ones. Yeah, and for the form, just a little detail, uh, you won't be able to send the form if there's no proof. So basically, Yeah, you'll have to fill in every yes. single bit. So basically it's... It's, it's, it's going to help also with... Uh, I mean, we get a lot of tickets that are missing information, and sometimes it's not uh, necessarily, I wouldn't say malevolent, but it's the fact that then the mods have to, set you or the customer it's support has to send yeah. a message with asking more information, yes. and so then it's the a back lot and of forth time. is... It's a lot of time that we yeah. are... Uh, so, yeah. So this is not for customer support. It's only for in-game reports with proof, because right now we can't copy and paste proof in, yeah, yeah. in the in-game report. Is it clear? I think it was. Yeah. Well, we'll have a, a post uh, on the Steam yeah, forum, yeah, yeah. It's, which is going to have all the information all expl uh, well explained up there. Uh, good. Now, roadmap. What's happening? What's ahead? Where yeah. are we going with this? Yes. Okay. Hey, what's next? What's next? That's funny because someone was saying, no rate? Why? Well, well it's the first thing on the list. Um, this is, again, a very loose uh, order in which yeah. things are going to come. Uh, but we know the, r the rate update the big, is... The, the, the next big update yeah. is going to be, obviously, the rate update. Uh, the PTB and the winter events are might be kind of in between-ish at yeah. the same time. We don't know exactly. Uh, and um, ju Just quickly, the ambulance system, for those of you just joining us right now, yes. uh, the ambulance system is, is a rework of the, the scoring and the way you are judged at the end of the match. Uh, and uh, we have a few questions in the Q&A about that, but the idea is that uh, it's going to be different categories that, are, uh, e that have an equivalent on the other side. So if you're doing very well as a survivor, probably that's going to eat away at some points on the killer side, and it's going to be much more dynamic. Anyway, uh, I'll get into a few more details when we get to the Q&A, but that's the emblem system. Yes. So basically, new point system. Yeah. And, and the PTB, also for yes. the people who don't know, that's the public test uh, bill. bill. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and basically it means that you are going to have access to what we want to implement as the patch and you can give us your feedback yeah. and then we can adjust a, a couple of things if needed and then we're going to push the patch to everybody. So, um, it, you know, It's the equivalent of a, a beta or an alpha yeah, for any other game, but this is for changes. a section of the game. We want to make yeah. sure that... Yeah. And because these changes were major, and yeah. will influence like the whole way how we play the game and everything. It was important that we uh, we have the PTB for you guys. Correct. Yes. Then the winter event. Uh, well, there's nothing much to say about it. Uh, you guys are gonna be notified when it comes in. And it's and gonna on. be. Uh, is is it gonna be awesome? Of course it will. Okay, just checking. Uh, and uh, then the the actual release of the emblem system yes. so that's after the ptb after we've taken note of the stuff that people like people don't like and yeah. we can adjust it yes exactly because we don't want to go to holidays yes. and push like the new system right yeah. before so so oftentimes we push stuff out and then we readjust it afterwards actually yes. we do that all, all the, the time, time. <laughs> uh, but in this case it's such a big system that we want to really put it as a as a special yeah. separate build to make sure that we don't because it changes everything oh, so we really want to make sure that we talking are. about feedback uh, so last week we promised a rate uh, mega tread on steam forums and actually uh, you guys participated a lot and it was great there was good suggestions just a detail actually the, the, the design team took the time to read every comment and uh, and they were really happy with the feedback so I think that's something that we might want to continue Do doing yeah doing again so uh, good here it is grats and New most of ways. you uh, stayed pretty positive and nice in the comments. But even when, I mean, we understand that this game will always create lots of intense reactions, whether they're positive or negative. That's sort of part of the game. It's, 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 we created a game that triggers people, you know? So we expect a strong reaction, but it's really, really cool that we have a new uh, channel of communication so that we can actually get more feedback and hopefully make a game that you enjoy more.
I, I'm just and I, I just want to no, no, yeah. pushing me. It's fine. And I'm telling you that actually uh, the design team took time to read everything, so that's a great thing. Thank you for your comments. Cool. Uh, general issues. General issues. Okay. Well, that's pretty much it. We have three slides. We change a little bit how we're going to do the things with the bugs this week. And uh, from now on, if you guys like this, uh, we're going to we're going to continue on this um, yeah. this way like this. Um, so basically uh, what I'm saying is these bugs right now that you see on the uh, on, uh, on the slide are being tested internally. So basically, someone fixed it internally, and we're we testing it right sure now to make sure that it's not breaking something else, yeah. so that it's actually fulfilling its its. Uh, so these its these need. are being tested right now. Uh, the fixes for these issues are being tested right now. There you so go. That's, that's interesting. Next one is. Uh, so we're not going to list them all. That's no. that's the new that's way the that we're going to do because you guys can read it. Uh, you can go back on it. Uh, there's going to be summaries after. Uh, working on it. So basically, these uh, the working on it is either uh, someone is specifically uh, has the task to fix this issue, and they're trying to figure out how to do it. So the bug is not fixed yet, but someone is uh, has that on their plate. So these are the main bugs that we are working on right now, and that we're trying to um, fix. So basically, and to the to the right, you have all the platforms that it affects. So uh, these bugs are all live bugs that are already out. So uh, yes, as of one or three gate issues is something that we are still working yeah, on. Yeah, <laughs> that is a mysterious curse. As of is in, yes putting on us. Yes. So here we go. And for the last one, uh, these are bugs that we're aware of. Maybe that we need more information. Uh, maybe that uh, design needs to have a look at it and see. Okay, well, do we? Was that intended? Do, what do we want to do with this? So basically, these we know about it, and uh, it's oh. okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, and and uh, we're gonna we're gonna try to work on it, of course. But sometimes we're gonna need more information from you guys and uh, logs and stuff like that. So uh, all these are gonna be specified when we need something from you. And uh, just a note here, missed and offerings is up there because yeah. uh, yes, we had optimization. It changed a bit how the miss was behaving. Yeah. And now we have to have a decision over on like on the and design what side, what do we do with this? Yeah. So that's, that's where we are for this one. But it helped the, the performance. Yes. So that's the good news. That's yes. why it, it was put in. That's where the decision came from. Uh, that was PC and console issues. That's no, no, that's, no, that's, that's all what, the issues. That's the old, okay. that's the old way. Now we're doing it the new way. Better. All right. Well, uh, I think, oh, no, we wanted to do a little bit of a Q&A. You want to ask me some questions? Sure thing. So these are the questions as every week where uh, our mods put a tread on Steam. Uh, you people out there write some questions and then uh, there's a little bit of a pruning that happens which means the duplicates get removed the things that are just troll questions or just hate-filled you know rants uh, anything that's also uh, you know it obviously just trying to bait us into saying something stupid uh, get removed and then we actually take this and I usually go to the people around the team and I get answers and then I answer them so let's go yes so uh, hmm. oh Jemmy is asking how will the new emblem system reward players for playing how they want to play that's extremely convenient. We were talking about that earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea of the emblems is that they will have much broader categories than the scoring system has. And it's not replacing the scoring system, it's sort of a, a side thing. Uh, but the, 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 the emblem, it is replacing the scoring system. No, that's okay, I'm right. Yeah, you made a face and I wasn't sure. Uh, but essentially, it's going to be much broader categories. So sometimes things you do that are not a specific scoring event will still count as points uh, for you in there. Perfect. Yeah. 
Uh, Cupcake Cookie is asking a lore question. Yes. Can the killer still properly think like the human they once were, and do they still remember who they were, what they've done before the entity snatched them? The short answer is yes. Obviously, the transformation or the transfer changed them quite a bit. A lot of them uh, now labor under an intense... Uh, they are forced, some of them are forced to do this, some of them are gladly doing this. Probably, you know, Michael Myers didn't change his ways much to fit into the world, uh, but someone like the hag was broken by the transition. Uh, but still, they have their own personalities, they have their own thoughts, they're just under very strict orders to do what they do. All right. Um, customer service is asking. <laughs> That's uh, his name. Yeah, okay. you mentioned map <laughs> reworks. How are you planning to do this? Could you elaborate a bit? Um, yeah, go ahead. No, but that's it. So the map. A <laughs> yeah, the, the, but yeah. And then I went to ask the question. Okay. So the map rework was uh, obviously we're not changing the layout of the existing maps per se. What we're doing though is uh, things like we did with uh, the the foundry where we remove part of the railing to make sure that the gameplay was better and the flow was better. We're gonna keep doing these little changes. Uh, also, things like the, the palette placement yes, and the, the palette a, distribution. That's a spicy one, yep. Uh, that, that's the kind of thing that we're talking about when we're talking about map rework. Well, actually, we were talking about uh, a, a new access to a tool that will let us, Yeah, no, you that's know, it. and it's, it's talking about all the spawning uh, uh, rules. So it's not yeah, so even the hooks and even the, and the, even the, the survivors and, and the killer because and the hexes and the hexes and yeah. everything. So that's going to help us a lot on that. So there is plan to work on this. So that's good news. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm that, that's the bad guy from the Mad Max game. Yeah, Scrotus yeah. is uh, is asking, what is the center of your design philosophy with regards to chasing and hiding? Do you want to? Do you guys want a lot of short-lived chases or a few long one chases? So the the ideal moments for us are in the short chases because then you, you have to chase and then either you manage to catch them or you manage to escape as a survivor. Obviously, also there is the meta strategy that survivors want to waste as much time from the killer as possible. So long chases are good for that. But for us, the goal is always to have short, exciting chases, much more than long-winded chases that don't lead to anything. And this is one of the reasons we are looking at the palette placement. Correct. There you go. Casper uh, is asking, do you have plans to come to EU? Yes. Okay. That's the extent of what I can <laughs> yes. say right now. Okay. Yes. Uh, Van Cold is asking, since Death Hard was a great design success, are you planning on releasing more active perks? Maybe that share the same cooldown, maybe for survivors and killers? Uh, yes, but with lots of very uh, delicate rules. Uh, the, the biggest example of that would be if you equip three activatable perks, which buttons are used for that? That's a very simple thing for a keyboard. You can just map everything. But for controllers, it doesn't work as well. It needs to be the same on console. And even then, it would mean we'd need to change the loadout so that you could actually apply buttons that so there, it's it's not a simple thing, but yes, those perks, the dead hard perk work really, really well, and we need to, uh, you know, learn from that. I remember that first testing of dead hard when it was like as long as a, uh, as a sprint burst yeah. and activable whenever you wanted, not well. hurt, not whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that was insane. <laughs> okay, uh, Eric is asking, will Leatherface and the Doctor get unit... Oh, yeah. Uh, unique unique sounds. sounds for picking up survivors or vaulting. They seem to be using the trapper's sound effect for picking up and vaulting. So, picking up and vaulting do not have, we're not talking about grunts or voices here. We're purely talking about, you know, uh, literally folate, it's called, but essentially like sound effects for stuff happening. And the Leatherface and the Doctor uh, are using, uh, the, these sounds are based off of materials. And that's the way they are. So either stuff is fabric or stuff is leather or stuff is ethereal, which is what the nurse is made of. So yeah, the the leather clad people will all use the leather sounds. Okay, perfect. There you go. 
Um, Henry is asking, why do killer get to see survivor offering before trial? It just gives them a chance to disconnect before the trial even starts if they dislike the offerings, which will be lost. Yeah, we, as I wrote there, we thought about it. Uh, the, the, it's a part of a bigger thing where we want to look at what's visible when and what information is given to Lobby which side. Lobby information discussion. Yeah, yeah. so it, it, and it, it goes over that. So like even in the game, what information you should have at your disposal, it's, it's, a, it's a big issue. But yes, the whole uh, offering sequence and the, the lobby, what's visible, we, uh, we are looking at that actively. All right, uh, Meme Men is asking, uh, in the potential changes coming with the rate cube, you mentioned a Shadowborn rework. Will it be able, other than to further increase uh, field of view, to increase brightness like it used to, and or help with the mist, especially now that it was thickened? Uh, so th the way oh, yeah. I wrote it, it's uh, <laughs> field of view, yes. Uh, brightness, no, because we removed the, the offerings for brightness because it was putting such a harsh strain on art for lighting the levels, and it created a lot of weird issues. And as far as the mist, uh, the thickening of the mist, like we talked about, was sort of a side effect of the optimizations. Uh, it'll be uh, looked at again, uh, but the, the FOV and the the vision of the rate. I think you talked a little bit about it last time. So the yes. vision of the rate will be a little different uh, and the FOV is going to be uh, still uh, valid, but the, the brightness is going to be treated differently and the mist also. All right. There was so a couple was the, of uh, questions from uh, Oh, yes. We have a few questions chat. in there. Uh, so someone asked about the fog. We answered that. Uh, the form will mean they don't have to contact support. Yes. The, the in-game report uh, player report form means that you don't have to send an email to deadbydelight.bhvr.com you just have to fill in the form and you send your proof and here it is All right. so it's gonna lessen uh, the customer support work the PTB is not live you will know we will yes. make sure that it's plastered Absolutely. everywhere when it is uh, does the emblem system rework the rank system as well introducing leagues, etc. The leagues is something different, but the emblem system does uh, fit in with the ranking. Yes. I'm, I'm looking at Thomas, uh, Thomas who's right there. Like He's <laughs> gonna come by and talk to us about the dailies in a moment. Uh, uh, proximity voice chat. Seriously, that's been a while since we heard that one. No, we're not gonna do that. Uh, console skins, yes. Hang on to your knickers, it is coming. Uh, will you guys be adding colorblind mode? Uh, I, I, I really want to. We, we I really want to. We had this discussion. And we bring and we it up. Have this discussion often. This discussion often. Uh, we talked about trying auras at first, and then, but this is not done at all. This is still discussion state. All right. Matthew, there should be a package coming for you any day with matching bow tie and suspenders in it. Wow, mm -hmm. that is some fancy. She forgot to give it to me at TwitchCon. I was supposed ah, to bring them it's back. It's Almia. Yes. Oh, hi. Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, we'll keep taking questions uh, throughout the whole thing. But uh, Thomas is is getting tired. He's sleepy, I think. <laughs> so I'll uh, I'll bring him in to talk to you about the dailies, and also because I know that Andrea is probably waiting on the other side of the door. Yeah, I think I, I'm I'm done. Okay. You can have fun. Well, thank you very much. Well, this is basically. Uh, where the fun starts. So it's panel. <laughs> <laughs> I leave, so the fun starts. Um, no, we didn't do that. Well, well do you that can anyway. do it with okay. the fun. You know, you'll, it's the fun part. Enjoy, you'll enjoy I'll it enjoy from afar. I will join you guys in chat, actually. All right, cool. So, Thank you very much. Hi, uh, Please, have a seat, Thomas. Thomas. Come on. Come on. Boof work. Huh? Boof work. So, uh, good. Are you going to? Trying to find Andrea? I think she got lost. She's here. Oh, she's there? Yeah. Okay. Hi. Hey. You can have a seat. It's fine. It's, yeah. it's just a moment. So, uh, Thomas, <coughs> Tama, uh, you, you know him. You, you go way back. Uh, so, we want to talk a little bit about the dailies. So, what was changed specifically about the dailies and most importantly, why? Right. So, a week ago, along the blood web changes, we also changed the way the dailies work. So, we reworked them. Uh, basically, what we did is that there used to be three different um, 
stealers of daily that you could get. So for example, if you have to unhook survivors, you add three different requirements, asking you to unhook more and more and giving you more blood points as a compensation. Uh, so we removed this functionality, so now you only have one tier. I, I'm sorry, it's just people are writing, oh, baguette, oh, what an accent. Right, well. Pay attention, he's actually very clever and talking about important stuff. Yeah, don't be... Oui, oui. Don't be um, uh, unfocused by right, my accent. There you go. Uh, all right, so. Um, three we tiers, We went from points. three tiers to one, yeah. uh, keeping only the lowest one, basically. Um, so from some of them, it actually didn't change the amount of blood points we used to reward because we just kept the tier one. For some others, we lowered a bit the requirement for tier one, and by extension, we also lowered the amount of blood points you get. Uh, the important thing to keep in mind is that uh, proportionally, you s are still rewarded the same amount of blood points for your action. So if you had to unhook four survivors before and now it's only two, you're gonna get uh, your amount of blood points divided by two. So that's still proportionally the same reward for the action you are doing. So what was the motivation behind keeping this to smaller daily rewards? So the idea behind that is that we want the daily to be something that you can complete with a low amount of efforts and that you can do every day. Uh, now, for some players that wasn't an issue, they were able to just complete complex dailies which could take time, several games sometimes, yeah. in one day. Uh, for some others that was more complex just because they are either less skilled um, in the game or simply they have less time. So yeah. this is the, 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 the population we want to target and make it so dailies are more like attractive to them because they used to have more of a hard time to actually complete them. Um, so that's the main idea behind it, engaging more players to do dailies. Uh, now, one week later, we know that it's not a very popular change and we know that some of you complain about that. So we are hearing you, we're reading the comments, uh, we, we know how you feel and that's something we are talking about a lot. So um, nothing is set in stone. What we want to do is make it so everyone engage more easily in the dailies and that's why we are um, closely looking at the data how many people are actually mm -hmm. completing them? Do they come back more often? Is it a change which actually makes them more enthusiastic in coming back to the game? So that's the thing that we are we are currently looking at. But we are also aware that it's not something everyone is uh, happy with, and we are like reading your comments. So um, this is something that we are going to keep working on and keep monitoring in the, Please in the next Please keep weeks. the constructive feedback coming. Yes, we are paying attention. Yes, you um, are paying attention. Like I'm, I'm looking at something yeah, else. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like, we, we, we tell us how you feel about that, because that's important to us. Um, we are paying close attention to how things evo evolve and how people actually engage with those daily to make sure that we are going in the right direction. Um, another thing which is important to keep in mind also is that there is a distinction between something that you can do easily every day for an amount of blood points which is going to help you progress if you don't play much. And something which engaged players who have more time, who are willing to invest more effort into a game, can also do to get more blood points. Um, this is another thing that we are talking about that's still very early. Uh, we have designs for that and we are talking about it. But we are looking into other ways to actually make objectives more um, engaging and more like harder to achieve basically, but rewarding you more if you are willing to take the time to actually invest in them. Good. Hopefully that clarified a few things about the dailies and the changes that we made to them. Uh, as I said, the, the, these are never final, but mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, well, we, we don't get as, the, the, the most vocal players are the top tier players. They are super engaged, they, they play, they spend many, many hours every day and they, they do give us a lot of comments. The people who play casually, that play just a few hours here and there, they are the brunt of the community, but they are the less vocal. Which is so also it's why difficult we need, to... Uh, exactly, that's also why we need time, because those players, we're not gonna hear from them. So we need time to actually get data and assess if this change has the expected effect. 
So, so yeah, that's not something we can change on the fly. On Question, the fly. since this change was made before you were, uh, rarities and blood web has been changed, do you, we will ever, that's very difficult to read, oh, uh, okay. will we ever see ultra rare and common perks make a return? Yes, okay, so um, we are talking about how to make perks progression more appealing and more interesting. So there are a lot of options on the table at the moment. Making common and ultra rare a uh, return at this point, I'm not sure that's going to help us much uh, because that's going to bring more variety in the perks you can get. But ultimately, right now, the perks variety is not necessarily representative of what they do. Mm. Uh, you have perks which yeah. end up being rare and which are super good, and some others which end up being very rare. Um, so we want to have a better look at what rarity means when it comes to perk, and then we work it accordingly. All right, fair enough. Anything else you wanted to add on this? No, I think that's pretty much it. Hopefully that clarifies things. Hopefully so. Uh, okay, that's different subjects, so we'll leave it at that. I might answer it later. Uh, thank you very much, Tom. Thank you. You can, uh, I, I'm sure you have quite a lot to do, but uh, Thank you for stopping by. Thanks. And I'm sure people have enjoyed your accent. Uh, and now I would like to introduce you. You've never been here before. Yes, I've been here. Yeah. Yes, I've been here. Been here. Oh, right. OK. So uh, yeah, you remember uh, Andrea. Hi. Uh, so Andrea is a concept artist, a 3D artist, uh, just an artist. They're essentially an artist uh, <laughs> working with us. Uh, we love her very much. So uh, we want to talk today about, uh, go into a little more detail about the process of creating some of the assets that we do here. Okay. So uh, uh, the example we're going to take is the uh, nurse head that yeah. you did for uh, Halloween. So I will, I will let you talk and I will show. OK, well, the nurse, it's a, it's a very good example because it's the first one that we tried uh, like a different approach to it. We usually, we used to do a lot of 2D concept and now we tried something extremely bold, but that worked out well. It's actually a lot of teamwork to make uh, this asset. So we start with, with the, the 3D model from uh, Damien, that is the, the actual base for the nurse. Okay. And then I got the brief from Dave and then he told me, let's write something for Halloween and we go with something uh, we start with something a little bit more cliche, a little bit more uh, symbolic, and then we keep on trying some different things. I remember Matt, you passed by the desk and like, you know what, we're Canadians, we usually when we do that, we have to cut the, the top of the head for the, <laughs> for the thing to actually work. Oh yeah, it's true, I've talked yeah. about the little seam in the thing there, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so we kept on trying different things. Is that a Canadian thing? Well, it's not a Brazilian thing, that's for sure. What do you do with pumpkins there? We we don't. Oh, okay. We buy plastic All right, ones. Then. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So, so yeah, yeah, that was the original concept. We fiddled with that for a bit. Yeah, and then we realized that it wasn't that much of a dead by daylighty kind of thing. Yeah. It usually, it's more cartoony it. or something. Yeah. It, it usually gets a bit more gross than that. And yeah. So then we went back and we started to dig some weird stuff. Let's look at gross things. That's right. What we do. That's always fun. And then I remember we didn't have a lot of pumpkins around at the time. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, let's try to see references from zucchini at <laughs> supermarkets and stuff like this to see like upfront. It's funny because this is what you get now with people who still have their Halloween yes. pumpkin That's on there. Yeah. With a little bit of, of uh, you know, some snow on the side right now, trying to yeah. preserve some bits. But yeah, usually pretty gross stuff. Already. A lot closer to Dead by Daylight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so once we got to that, we started trying some stuff out on ZBrush. So the bottom part of the, the body, of the body itself, it's a model by uh, Damien Devo. And uh, I started playing around with the shape of the head. We started with a sphere and just making sure that we are okay with the restrictions that we have in the game. Like we can't uh, make a huge head that would clip through things. We have some constraints with animation. Yeah, when you're well. carrying the survivor, things yeah. like that. That wouldn't be so appealing no. again. You have to go through the door frames. Yeah. yeah. And then so we start So ZBrush, just for those who don't yeah. know. It's a it's a thing now. Okay. Yeah. It's one of those things. So it's basically it allows you nowadays to sculpt in a more artistic way. 
So you can have, you start with a sphere, for example, and you can push things around and get to a head, for yeah. example. You have some tools and it's basically as if you were sculpting traditionally. Yeah. So it gives you a lot of freedom and the fun thing with it about, uh, with concept art is that it allows you to make a bunch of different things, make a bunch of iterations, sit down and see, does it work? Sometimes we do a little render as this one on the left and uh, the left for me, is it the left for them as well? Or oh, the colored one? No, no, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's the same. And then we go back to Photoshop and I put some, some textures on top of it just to make sure that it will work in the end. For this one, it was a little, a little bit too much like the, you know, the, the painting, the screen? Yeah. Yeah, 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 very much so. So we decided to push more to the, to the gross part of it. And when we finish the sculpture, it looks pretty grayish like this, but we can have an idea of how things will work out in the end. So that's what we call the high poly, and now uh, it's how we rework the, what well we can. And the yeah. high polygon is because the, the, the sculpt that we do has, I, I don't know how many million polygons, but it's sort of ridiculous. Of it them. cannot be used like that in game. Let's say a, a lot of millions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's the thing with ZBrush. So it cannot, you can't just export it to the game and use it like that. It's impossible. We could have just like the nurse's head around and the then, lobby and, and that's then we'd it. have nothing else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, this so is the low poly version. Yeah. So what what I do is that I pick up the the approved version of the high poly, I decimate it. There is a a way to make it make the file a little bit more compressed, so I can actually see it in this other program that is Maya, and then I do a a little retopology that is to recompact it even more. And what you're seeing on the side of it is the UV. No, so just go back for a second. This, uh, I remember my classes when I, yeah. I did the, uh, 3D modeling, and this is the part that everybody hates doing. Yeah. There's like one weirdo <laughs> in the class that's like, ooh, this is fun. Yeah. Th it's horrible. Nobody it's, sits with that. No, it's horrible. No. It's essentially you're trying to flatten a 3D image, and you, you try to there's ways you have to, that's where you have to be the most efficient possible so yeah. that you can use every single pixel of, of your square texture mm -hmm. to to create detail yeah. and the, I think the thing with this one with this step is that it's never the same it changes for every model so for this one we had you know the pieces for the mouth they're very deep and sometimes to have a lot of detail on those pieces if I just let it there to get completely compressed mm. and we'll see some pixelation so Sometimes you have to go do this, and then you see if it's working well or not. And then you go back, but it's in the end the theory behind it's like a a wrapping gift, wrapping paper. It's kind it's of thing, unwrapping. Right? Yeah, That's what yeah. it's called. It's unwrapping the UV. Yeah. Yeah. So once we have this, then you can paint it. Yeah. Well, we bake it first. And so then that's the lighting, right? Well, that's the occlusion map. Yeah, no? well, this is only the the model already baked in substance, and then I started painting on top of it. Like I can use oh, okay. some information. Well, the the interesting thing about it is that once you have the low poly and the the high poly wrapped around it, it gives you a lot of m a lot more information about the position of your uh, the, the details. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'm going to nerdy. No, no, no. That's okay. a, that's why you're here. Okay. Show off. Okay. <laughs> So it will give you some extra information and you can actually reuse it w when you're painting. So for example, I don't need to go, and this was a trick from Damien, uh, you don't have to go looking for the little crevices in your model. You can actually like look for uh, where is the position of those indentations and if mm. they're too far in into the surface, you can identify that and you can place a mask so it works faster and uh, yeah. So we. I, I keep on painting on it, and you can see on the UVs on the side, you can have an idea of how uh, things are playing out for that. And the next one. Your next one? Yeah. Yeah, there so you go. This is how it looked like inside of the eye ring, that is like a, a render inside of Substance. So that's a, a beauty shot. So yeah. th essentially, and that's the, the, the sort of trick where the artists go, hey, look, that's the model I made. It's so amazing. And then we look at it and go, yeah, but it's not going to look like that in game. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. There, there's always, there'll be always a gap. But that's what, well, I mean, I think that when we do this, when we do the, those renders is to try to 
get as closer to that. Yeah, of course. In the end. But we always need to reach as far as we can go. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Uh, so in this case, the full painting is there, and the the light in there is just painted on. Yeah. Well, yeah. we have a map that is an emissive. I think that the next one has all the maps. Like, so yeah. There you go. So you actually spit up all of those maps that are. Know, so uh, these are all the texture or uh, essentially elements of texture that will tell the game how to display this thing. Yeah. You, can you name them in order? Well, you have uh, the, the base color and then you have the second one is the, the very interesting one for this uh, thing specifically is the, the emissive one. The emissive will take care of the, the glowing bits yeah. coming out of her face. So it actually emits light. That's yeah. why it's called an emissive. Exactly. You have some roughness there to show a bit of where the... The third one is the roughness. Yeah. If I uh, and w the, the roughness is how the light is going to reflect on it. Yeah. Is it going to be glossy or is it going to be really like scruffed? Exactly. The fourth one, the blue one there? It's a normal map. It's the one that will show how things are wrapping around the surface. So it's actually where we see the information of the, the high poly. Mm -hmm. It's like a how to fake the high poly on top of the low. It's how the, the again, it's how the shadows and the lights are gonna bounce off. So it tells you the direction that it is facing. And the last one. The last one is uh, okay. So I come from a, a from a, like a formation. Ouais, from a cinema. Yeah. So sometimes I get mixed up with the names. Don't. It's fine. Yeah. So if I'm not mistaken, is the the did I say roughness already? Yeah, that was the yeah. top uh, right. So both of them, they actually would kind of combine. I'm gonna I play around between one and the other, trying to see uh, how the the model work better in the editor yeah. with them. So I can they they will actually work towards the same thing. That is the the brightness of certain spots. It's like the roughness and the the, the glossiness. Yes, and, and these absolutely. Yeah. That's the word. Thank you. Kay. And the, the, the last one is the metalness, and since we don't have any metal information, it's it stays flat. simple as it is, yeah. So it is a sixth map there. Yeah, well, it depends, like the, the next uh, slide is uh, how we actually integrate things in game. So it depends on the functionalities that you need That's for the That's very abstract. Yeah, <laughs> well on the right is the material itself, so we can have an idea of how things will behave, and on the left side... But it's rendered on a sphere right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And on the left side, you have you you input like all the the maps that you have, and you see how they go. Sometimes you have to make an adjustments from the the files that you have some from uh, Substance. And once this is done, and all the back and forth is completed, there is the magic. Magic that happens. Do, do we have magic there? Ah, oh, there you go. Well, we have the magic. we have actually a big step that I didn't talk about. That is the, the BFX. Yeah, the work of Isabel. Yeah. It's really, really cool. So she adds the smoke and the, the flames and everything else. Yeah. Well, there's Particles. Yeah, and there's something else that she added as well, because once you think about a, a 3D asset, you think about it in a controlled environment with a specific light, right? Yeah. So once uh, we put it in game, it goes bananas, right? Because we have all different types of lighting, and it will react differently. Yeah. So she ac actually positioned some lights as well, so we can have a more controlled reaction from it. And Someone's yeah. asking, what's the texture size? Well, for this one, we were using 2K. Okay. Yeah. So, so as a base. 2048. Yeah. And then we play around with it as. And do we you need to create optimize. it in 2K or do you we create it bigger and then shrink it? It depends. For example, if we're talking about bigger killers, like a uh, full body, and we know that we'll use it later on for uh, marketing and stuff like this, sometimes we get it out like uh, 4K mm -hmm. and then. But it's just so like the for marketing, but you shrink it. Yeah, but I know that if we dropped it in a real, it would just like burn yeah. to the ground. Uh, so two K textures. Yeah. That's two thousand forty-eight pixels by two thousand forty-eight. Yeah. And then in the end, we make the the little icon. Yes. That goes in the game, and you can actually. Which is actually a render of the the in-game yeah. object itself, put on a nice little background. So that's it? Yep. That's, that's easy. It. That took how long? From the very first moment when you started to doodle uh, to the render in game and the icon is done? That, that's, that's a very complex question actually because it takes some time in the beginning to figure out what do you want to do. Uh, I mean as a team what are we 
going to answer to you know to, to Dave's uh, brief mm -hmm. and make sure that everybody's on the same pace. But it, once this is figured out, like uh, the actual sculpture took like uh, I don't know a day and a half maximum, like just to make sure mm -hmm. that to go from sphere to a final approved and uh, with all the back and forth. And then the painting was like uh, half a day or a day plus the integration. So two, let's say two days and a half for the from the sculpture from the start of the sculpture to the integration of it. But I'm not counting with the VFX and I'm not counting yeah. with the beginning of the concept in 2D. So, yeah, total probably a week of work, but it requires yeah. a lot of different people yep. uh, jumping in on this. Yeah. So someone is saying here, uh, please have her on the stream more often. Very pleasant and interesting. Thank you. Well, Thank there you, you go. very much. I think it is. It says, we love nerdy. It's yeah. funny. You can go into details. There are a lot of people out there who are, you know, and, and nowadays you can get Unreal for free. You can yeah. try Game Maker. There's Unity. Everybody's tried to make a game at some point. Right. Starting a game is easy. Everybody started a game. Finishing a game is incredibly hard. I uh, but it's very satisfying. But everybody can, you know, Blender. There's a lot of free yeah. uh, uh, softwares you can use out there. And I highly recommend it. Because it is, it's a, it's a beautiful artistic outlet. Everybody needs to create something once in a while. It helps get stuff out. It's very therapeutic, also. But also, it'll give you an idea of the amount of work that goes into creating these things. Absolutely, it's not simple. And it's always a teamwork, so that's that's good, right? So yeah, doing things by yourself is, well, there, there, you you hit a wall really quickly. And in our case, there's so many moving pieces that yes, it's always five, six, seven people getting involved. <coughs> from uh, from one step to the other. Uh, are there any plans to update the Deluxe Editions art book? I uh, want to see the new character art. Yeah, probably not updating the art book, but it okay. might be a good idea to do a volume two or something because there's been so much done since then. Uh, that is a very good idea. Uh, lurid Lights. I'll put that here. Um, same with the, the soundtrack. People were asking about oh, updated yeah. tracks. Uh, obviously, the, the problem would be uh, with the, the licensed stuff. Okay. Uh, we've had quite a few these days, so it might be a little difficult. Uh, someone saying, I found that really interesting as I know nothing about game creation. Incredible stuff. Thanks, Andrea. It's all there. No problem. My pleasure. Uh, I, uh, if you want to stay with me, I have my very favorite part of the show coming yeah. up. Well, let me see stuff that. from the web. Okay. Uh, do I have other things that I forgot about, uh, Bjorn? Please keep me focused. No? Good. Okay. Uh, so let's go to amazing stuff I found around the web. Uh, my mods were very pleasant and jumped in on the chance to uh, get me stuff from uh, farther reaches of the webs than I usually can get my uh, grubby mitts on. But I wasn't able to get all of that in at the last minute. I had too much, so I'll keep that for other, uh, other times. But let's uh, look at some stuff. Uh, the first one I have here is actually someone who is creating... Uh, mask, uh, Amil Carona, I believe, probably I'm mangling your name, but these are not meant to be read, they're uh, to, to be spoken aloud, they're just meant to be read. Uh, so uh, that's made out of uh, papier mache and oh my God, paint, it's, and it's, it's actually a physical okay. object. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, it's really cool. All right, next up we have Atomic Future, <laughs> who made this, uh, she's got very hairy forearms. Yeah disturbing but you know what it works uh, then we have Elliot Hardy I just found that on Twitter like two minutes before the show and it blew my mind well done you that is some sweet ink right there I really like the the sketched uh, vision of it uh, really seriously you you, uh, you you wear that proudly uh, then we have uh, Cara Wayne Cara <laughs> I, I I don't know the full story, but I'd read that comic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know more about this. It's really, really cool. Then we have Cactus Fruit. And again, I, I want to know the rest of that story. I like the, 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 those really intense action shots yeah. that tell just a snippet of something happening. Uh, the next one was a Korean uh, artist whose name I cannot 
even fathom. I apologize. Uh, we'll try to give credits where credit is due. Uh, really cool uh, little doodle there. Uh, then we have Kuro gave us this. Uh, it's, uh, I believe, the Wool Hat Club. So, there. Uh, Mango Kim. Mango Kim is giving us this incredibly intimidating uh, trapper. I like it. He seems a little uh, more slimmer than usual. Yeah. He needs to eat a few sandwiches or I something. I think he's looking for some food, maybe. Probably. It's the hunter helmet, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, then we have Pleorb 2. Uh, that's some sweet uh, doctor cosplay. Uh, yeah, the doctor is a very upsetting one to run into at a convention. Oh it God. happened like a couple times so far, and it's, 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 it's not the good one. Uh, then we have uh, Sandy, who also did a very nice uh, gender bending doctor here. Is it Len on the, on the run? Like yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's lighting up. Uh, same with the eyes and I believe the stick to uh, it's really nice. Uh, Terawatt. Again, <laughs> <laughs> uh, lots of untold stories yeah. in there. Uh, very, very cool. Uh, oh yeah, that is uh, oh, nice. that's your uh, artwork there. Uh, it's from, it's really cool. I don't know the name of that person, hopefully, but it is the person that I met at We Play that was actually one of the most, uh, the coolest Trapper cosplays that I've seen. Nice. So, yay. Uh, then I have here, uh, oh, <laughs> come amazing. on, this is amazing. <laughs> so this is someone very excited to get the rate cube. <laughs> and uh, once again, uh, skipping leg day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Uh, yeah, no, this is brilliant. It is now my... Uh, my Screensaver? But no, my background. Uh, I don't have a screensaver. Actually, it's the screen the official screensaver. They yeah. sort of overwrote our screensavers. It's your fault, Bjorn. Uh, then, Yodeki. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like it. He's got it a... Yeah, it's just that stupid smile. It's perfect. <laughs> And we end on a beautiful note with Raccoon Pie. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but that salacious side look is very upsetting to me. <laughs> the whole thing for me, it's a bit upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah. Okay. Did, did someone already make like a comic book from Dead by Daylight? Or I, I'm, I've seen many, like, plates like a okay. like a page of it but i don't think i i haven't been made aware of a full comic if someone has made at least a full story maybe not like 50 pages but yeah. a couple with a story done in comic book please please grab a mod scream it somewhere put it on on reddit put it on everywhere we want to see this please and uh, we will uh, we will brag about it and then we will scream everywhere about that uh, do I have a few uh, last questions? Uh, there's the questionable artwork. Yes, of course. Uh, and uh, yes, that's the new one I have. It's a robot. So uh, that's it for today, really. I'll repeat quickly uh, some of the news. So G-Star was awesome. I was very happy to be there. Thank you, Korea. Uh, there's a big German uh, tournament that's going to happen. Uh, I don't have the exact dates, but I'm sure uh, Gabrielle will be very happy. There's a hentai comic of Trapper and Meg. Of course there is. Uh, but still, send it my way. I, I have a, a sort of, yeah, morbid curiosity about these things. Uh, so the German tournament. We will be at PlayStation Experience in early December. So that's the weekend of the 9th and 10th. It's in Anaheim in California. Uh, uh, the outfit pass, we went through it. Steam Awards, uh, yes, go vote on awards, hopefully us. Uh, and then there is a big sale going on, so if you still have friends who don't have Dead by Daylight, buy it for them and then send it. And then the, there's going to be a new way for players to report the bad stuff to our mods. That's it. So. Uh, Thank you very much for joining me. That was delightful. 
you have Saint? something you would like yeah. to say? Yeah. You have a moment. Well, do, you, do you still do the? I still. Of it's been a while. Yeah. Yeah. And today I actually wanted to do a book uh, suggestion because That's I'm good. rereading one of my favorite books, uh, and uh, it's one of the best sci-fi, and it's called uh, Permutation City by Greg Egan. I highly recommend it if you're into uh, crazy mind expanding uh, sort of mind expanding okay. stuff. Uh, did you have words of wisdom that you would like to share with us? You are a somewhat wise person. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Not not for today, but I'm I'm gonna think of one okay. for the future. Yeah. yeah so give props to someone. Yeah. Say hi. Yeah. Hi. So, yeah. Uh, go ahead. No, no. Words of wisdom would be to think of, be prepared with words of wisdom. Yeah, Sometimes. I've done that before. Yeah. Oh, uh, damn. <laughs> and I didn't listen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so there. Uh, all right. Well, thank you very much for joining us. It was once again quite a lot of fun to do this and uh, we will see you next week. Bye.